the advent of a new era. The turn of the century when mobility was key to all. Aspirations were high, but so were fuel prices. And the world was slowly becoming a more environmentally conscious place. More and more people wanted to gain that freedom of mobility, but a growing number wanted to achieve this responsibly. This meant buying vehicles which were kinder on the environment than their predecessors, ones that consumed less fuel, thereby reducing the pressure on global fossil fuel demand, and also those that let out fewer harmful emissions, thereby helping the air quality in their immediate environment. And after the West, we are starting to see this growing conscience in markets like India, Russia, and China too. And so it was important for me to travel to a destination where an entire population has appreciated and accepted the need to change the way they've been living their lives. An entire population adapting to a new way of life. And that country had to be Japan, which is why I'm in downtown Tokyo's Ginza district. Now, it's not just a place where people are environmentally conscious or care about the environment. It's also the birthplace of a number of these technologies, especially in the automotive space. Welcome to a brand new season of Freewheeling on the NDTV network. I'm Siddharth Vinayak Patankar, and we are going to explore hybrid horizons. And that is because Japan has led from the forefront in not necessarily making the world's first green cars, but certainly in making them popular and available to a wide global audience. Chief amongst the various solutions are hybrid cars, since they have been adopted universally and in very large numbers. Now, as I mentioned, the world's first hybrid didn't come out of Japan. It was actually in Germany and at the turn of the century too. Except, we're talking about a different century. In 1900, it was automobile great Ferdinand Porsche who invented the first hybrid car. A four-wheel drive, the mixte used a pair of generators driven by a 2.5 bhp Daimler internal combustion engine. The car could travel 65 kilometers on battery power alone, it had a top speed of 50 km per hour. George Fisher then made hybrid buses in England in 1901. And the world got its first hybrid racer in 1902 from Knight Neftal. Several other examples have followed since. But it took nearly 100 years for the world to get its first mass production hybrid car. And that too had to happen in Japan. A society where even children understand at a very early age just how important it is to be responsible for one's environment. As I found at the Mirai Khan Institute in Tokyo. Children come here to understand the importance of sustainable development, the impact of global warming, controlling pollution and emissions, and also what all of this does to the planet. I think the one important point is the uh, make uh, make higher motivation for consider about the fuel consumption in Japan because the, uh, in the listen ten years ago uh, many people don't think about the fuel uh, consumption because the, the wants driving to enjoy the driving and also wants to uh, keep the some uh, bright cars but uh, now is the uh, we have to consider about the uh, about the earth environment for example uh, the uh, greenhouse effect and also so the many people 
I don't know the level of the consideration, but there are many people uh, have consideration about the as techno as, as environment. So the hybrid uh, become a one point of the key point. In, in autumn of 1993, there was a study going on this about this topic and they felt that maybe um, they needed somebody exclusive um, to work on this project. And I was assigned to this project in January 1994. And uh, my superior um, has given me a real simple mission. It was just to make a very um, simple vehicle for 21st century. And of course, when we think of the 21st century vehicle, we could invent a lot of um, dream aspect of the um, technology and other in the vehicle. But when we study this point, we already knew the vehicle numbers are going to increase, and there were a lot of issues on this uh, motor vehicle society. So we wanted to solve some of the issues. And we thought of the vehicle that would take into consideration of the environment and also energy issue. And we studied that and then we brought, made this concept and presented to the um, top management people. And after the presentation of the concept, the top management people approved of this concept and at that time um, we were ready to move into the next um, phase. Uh, the first prototypes didn't work, and so Toyota had to work on virtual and real-world models over and over before finding the right solution. Hybrid um, when we decided that we wanted to introduce hybrid vehicle, um, it was around this season of 1995. And I was, uh, uh, we were thinking of about last year of the 20th century, like 1999, uh, we wanted to introduce this vehicle. And we were working and developing this vehicle. But the top uh, management people said, maybe you should um, schedule it more earlier and um, introduce the vehicle. And the decision was made to introduce this vehicle by 1997. So from the decision and also to the, up to the um, introduction of the vehicle, we only had two years. Nineteen ninety-five, where there was a Tokyo Motor Show. Towards that, uh, we were um, working on this um, vehicle, ta taking the consideration of the energy and environment. Usually, at Toyota for the concept vehicle, we give the alphabet and number combination to the vehicle. But because it was um, my project, and I really wanted to give a name to this um, vehicle. I got approved and um, we as a team thought what would be a good name for this vehicle and that time the style designer was also involved and um, they came up with the it was a Latin word Purius. The sound, the Purius and the meaning of Purius, I strongly believe it really met um, the vehicle, it matched the vehicle. So not only for the concept vehicle, but I wanted to use this name for the product itself. Prius translates to coming before. So it represented a car that came before its time before environmental consciousness was a global reality. In 1997, Toyota Motor Corporation unveiled its first generation Prius. The car was not very special to look at, nor did it offer sensational performance or any standout comfort features. But it stood out for being the first of its kind. A mass hybrid available to many buyers. The target was of course Japan, and soon after, the United States. The rising price of fuel and uh, also growing concern for the environment 
meant that the global automobile industry was under a lot of pressure to try and deliver a tangible solution. Now, there was a fair amount of experimentation happening with things like biofuel or biodiesel. And you also had technologies like hydrogen fuel cells that were being developed and worked on by a number of car makers. However, these were either not practical to mass produce or they were simply just too expensive. And any solution had to appeal to consumers in markets like the United States where people were used to their cars being really convenient and really practical. This is what we ended up with. It was the first generation. If you look at the styling on this car and uh, compare it to especially the cars that you have on our roads today, it's perhaps not a whole lot. However, the Prius was still something of uh, an icon because no car up until that point had been mass produced and yet offered such an environmentally friendly technology as a solution. Only 300 units of the Prius were sold in Japan in the first few months. After all, the car was too new and too different for people to instantly understand what it was all about. Approaching a very informed and aware consumer was a definite advantage for Toyota in introducing the first generation Prius here in the Japanese market. However, that's not always enough. Just uh, the technology plank perhaps wasn't going to be enough to attract people into showrooms, into dealerships, to accept something that was so revolutionary and so different from what they were used to. And so that's where Toyota knew it had to also try and make this a differentiator in terms of uh, having a bit of a USP when compared to its rivals. Interest in the car soon picked up, with Toyota having to double production to 2,000 units per month soon. And after the US debut in 1999, the Prius was in the fast lane. became almost synonymous with the hybrid car. So many people identified with the need for something like this, and that's perhaps where the popularity came from. It also helped that uh, a lot of celebrities around the world were also adopting this specific model, trying to perhaps uh, echo that message of being environmentally friendly while you're on the go. And that especially worked in markets like the United States, here in Japan as well. We're talking about big A-list celebrities who went ahead and bought themselves a Prius. Reports of celebrities like Leonardo DiCaprio and Cameron Diaz buying a Prius helped put the car in the spotlight and soon sales crossed 20,000 units by the year 2000. The interest around the car also prompted Honda to work on a similar concept, launching its first generation Insight in 1999. Again, the target markets were Japan and the United States. I think the mm, first Prius is a sell, hot sale in US, but the first, of, first time only Hollywood star can buy it because it's a little bit expensive for ordinary people. But the, after second Prius, many people can buy because, uh, as you say, the oil price is increasing and many people decided to buy it. And uh, Toyota do, doing effort to decreasing the cost. So first Prius, little bit expensive, but the ordinary people have their own budget. But the second Prius is available for market, not only in Japan, uh, uh, but also US. So I feel the even eco-friendly car is many people considering about the cost effect. So Prius have the good target for the customer and uh, I feel that it's a very technology driven car but I feel the ca um, that car is a very uh, customer focused car, I feel. So it's an important thing, balance of the technology driven and customer focus. Indeed, even Toyota knew that the replacement for the original Prius had to be a major step up. The car needed to offer not just green credentials, but also comfort, 
drivability and affordability to really go mass. For first to second, we, add, we added the uh, so-called uh, voltage converter system. Uh, first generation Prius uh, battery uh, electric voltage and uh, motor uh, driven voltage is the same, so-called uh, 200 or 300V. And uh, for second generation Prius, we, add, uh, we added the uh, uh, voltage boost converter system. So, but even if the battery uh, voltage uh, 200V, uh, motor control uh, voltage uh, uh, 600 or 700 volt V. And that is a uh, very good effect on the uh, fuel efficiency. The second generation came in 2003. But before we progress any further, let's explain to the uninitiated just how a hybrid car works. When the car starts to move, and also at low speeds found in city driving, the car's engine comes to a stop and the car runs entirely on the electric motor, making it a silent operation and one that's totally emission-free. At higher speeds, the petrol engine kicks in. The engine power is split between the generator and therefore the electric motor, and also direct power to the wheels, like in a conventional car. When additional power is needed, at times when you need to overtake or go up steep inclines, then the battery power runs the motor to work in conjunction with the engine's power, giving the car the burst of power that it needs. While braking or slowing down, the kinetic energy generated in the wheels is transported as electric energy back into the car's battery, so it's automatically charged whilst the car is running. When the car comes to a complete stop at, say, a traffic light, the engine and the motor both shut down to save fuel. And at lower speeds, it's just the motor that runs the car, once again, saving fuel. The car also uses a smaller displacement engine than what a car of its size would normally use, which also helps add to the fuel efficiency. While the first generation Prius offered 17.8 kilometers to the litre, the second gen offered 20.4 kilometers per litre. While the first generation had managed a peak of close to 30,000 cars sold in a year, the second generation began with sales close to 50,000 in 2003 and went on to sell 286,000 cars in 2008. It was also made in China since 2005. First generation Prius mainly concentrated on to uh, efficiency itself. Uh, fuel efficiency and at the same time the packaging efficiency. Packaging means uh, uh, ma maximize the interior volume within the uh, small uh, bigger size. So, of course, we succeeded in the first generation Prius on that point. But once we, uh, well, we wanted to go next step, we uh, decided, well, we judged that the next additional factor is important. Of course, it is some so-called uh, uh, emotional direction. So from first generation to second generation, uh, power performance, drivability is greatly improved. And at the same time, exterior design has uh, some kind of so-called emotional and aerodynamic form. And, then, and, then, and that came at this moment that it's some, um, that has some iconic image of the uh, Prius shape. In May 2008, global cumulative Prius sales crossed the 1 million mark. And with the next generation, the 2 million milestone was achieved in September 2010. That iconic shape was carried over into the third generation of the Prius, which came in 2009. That car has been a massive success, entering new markets like India. Right through the 1990s and up to the turn of the century, Toyota had already established a reputation for itself in many markets across the world of being a car maker that offered efficient, 
and uh, easy to use models, models that were also available at different price points. However, the big game changer in terms of its image really did come from this hybrid system. Toyota instantly became recognized as the maker of the Prius, as the maker of a car that offers you not just efficiency, not just convenience, but also does a little bit something for the environment and lots of car makers have followed. In fact, you see now even the premium car makers, brands even like Lexus from the Toyota family, now offering hybrid as a bit of a USP for some of its consumers. So that was our look at uh, the initial steps of hybrid and also of course what it did for the brand and indeed the Japanese automobile industry. Plenty more still to come on our series, so that's something for you to look forward to next week. Until then, keep free